Are your thoughts getting to you? Sometimes they do to me. They could flash so quickly, like lightning, and they just keep coming and coming and coming. Out here in the Midwest, since we live out here now, I am able to watch incredible lightning storms, and they're very entertaining to me. But to capture them on film is very difficult because that lightning strikes so quick and then is gone. Wow. I find that my thoughts could be that way too. They could come in like a train, just bam, 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 bam. And it could be very overwhelming. One thought leads to another thought, leads to another thought, leads to another thought. Well, sometimes all those thoughts may not be good. They could be self-depreciating. They could be fearful. They could be just darn out ugly. May I encourage you today to take what 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, and that is to take every thought captive. I had heard that for many years, but it took continuous practice of it in order for me to what I would call keep in peace. I could lose peace quickly if I don't pay attention. It reminds me of last week. Last week, I had a hard time maintaining peace. I would do good for three or four hours and everything was fine. And then all of a sudden, I found that I was not the same person I was a little bit before. And that's because those lightning flashes of thoughts kept coming at me and they were growing. It was like one thought on top of another thought on top of another thought. And it was just mounding up. In my case, I wanted to go ahead and get back to the peace zone. That is where I can do my work so well, love on others much better. What I have found is as soon as I realize I have lost my peace, I need to realign myself and say, help God, help. And I mean it when I say it, I mean help. I need to go back and find what is at the root of all of this. What is it that is causing this mound of worries or mound of discouragement to start eating away at my peace? For last week, I had to unpile things as I was sitting there in silence after I said, help God. And that's when I realized it came to me. So did I hear God's voice saying, it's fear, Annette. No, I didn't. But it was like it was revealed to me. Look, Annette, you're being fearful. And at that moment, it was like, yep, that's the root of this. There's fear involved. Okay, God, now that I know that it's fear, I need help walking through what I am fearing. <laughs> okay, God, now that I know it is fear, I need help walking through this. What isn't legitimate? What is legitimate fear? And how can you carry this for me, God? How can I lay it down and let you carry it so I can go back to be at perfect peace the way you want me to live? Now, in the old days, I might just all of a sudden in that overwhelm, feel like I need to call my girlfriend or I need to talk to my husband, or I need to, and it's okay to talk to other people, family and friends. It's okay to talk to them about your worries. I'm not saying it isn't, but what I am saying is first and foremost, to go to God. Now he'll use those people in your life to encourage you. He'll use those people in your life to speak into you. But first and foremost, go to him. Even one of the times when I was struggling last week, and it was like, okay, God, I'm in that point again. I need some help with this. I know it's fear again, and it's coming back. And immediately, my husband came into my office and said, hey, Annette, can you help me with? And I said, oh, sure. And so I left what I was doing, and I was able to start talking with him. Would you pray with me about, and I would share with him what that fear was that was going on. And he said, you know, I'm concerned about that as well. Let's just both stop and pray. And that's what we did. 
Now I've talked in other videos how a good way to help you with your anxiety is to take deep breaths and go for walks or find out what would help you relax. But before all of that, before you take those deep breaths, ask God for help. So I will do that. I'll go, okay, God, I need to take a step back from this. The conversation starts and that is what's setting the stage for God to come in and bring that peace back. Life is going to happen and we're either going to walk through it each and every tribulation or moment with God or without God. And by the way, he could be with us and we still are not at peace. We need to decide to give him the burdens so we can have that peace. What good, good father would not reach out and help his daughter that is being engulfed by the waves of the ocean? He would reach in and grab her and save her. And that's what our God is is doing for us when we're in those moments of overwhelm, when we're in those moments of just the beginning of the waves getting too high for us. God is a good God and he attunes his ears to our cries, to our praise, to our prayers. I remember a Corey Ten Boom quote that talks about any concern too small to be turned into a prayer is too small to be made into a burden. So that means there is no prayer request too small to bring to God. In fact, to me, the sooner I bring my request to God, the smoother my emotional well-being will be during the day because it's a continual prayer open door to God as I am going forward in the day. Now, what was it like having that fear and having it try to consume me last week? Well, I could tell you there was a real current fear that was going on, but more than that, it was being compounded by past fears trying to jump onto the bandwagon and make this one fear that was a true fear of something be bigger than what it really should have been as well as making it sound like this is going to be the circumstance of how it's going to turn out completely negative completely seeing it definitely as the glass less much less than half full i was not seeing the possibility of god being glorified in a terrible situation and though it was a terrible situation, God's word was still available to me. And I loved that scripture was there for me to jump into. And one of them was 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. How many times have we been comforted by God? More than I can count. And that's what makes it possible for me to even bring the joy and the peace that God has given me through being healed through the sexual abuse, to bring that to the table, to share with others the comfort that he has given me. Praise God, he just doesn't give it to us, but then we have overflowing so that we're able to share that with others. So remember, we need to actually have our trust put in God. And if you're having a trust problem, make sure you tell God in your conversation with him that I don't know what you're going to do, God, but I'm learning how to trust you step by step. And just being honest with him, to me, belt my trust even more because he was willing to take me at the baby steps. Isaiah has a good scripture in it. Isaiah 26, three, you will keep in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. 
If you need to take those baby steps for trust, do it. If you're in a new territory and you've never walked through that with God before, praise God, something new to grow through. That's where I was last week. It was new territory. And boy, there was a lot of learning to be done. Could I trust God with it? Yes. We've walked through many situations before of different types, but it was still a new situation to trust God through. I really want to encourage you because God really desires for all of us to be at peace or he wouldn't have told us so in his word. Speaking of his word, stay in God's word. Read it. Stay in it. Get into a Bible study. There are so many good Bible studies going on online that could help you stay in the word as well as possibly some local churches that you live by. We are all going to have hard weeks that come upon us that canceled flight, that flat tire, sick little ones, lack of sleep. But Matthew 11, 28 through 29, will be there to remind you and me that we are to come to God. We who are tired and who have those heavy burdens and he will give us rest. Praise God for the peace that lets us rest. Remember, because he lives, it does change everything.